I'm Timothy Beckworth, tech editor at Mashable. Today I'm here to review the Apple Vision Pro, now with the M5 chip. I've officially completed the M5 Trinity. I've tested the iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro, and now the Vision Pro. So there's no doubt about it. The Vision Pro is the coolest product I've ever tested. It's one of those products that makes you feel like you're living in the future. That's something I've said before on this channel. I mean, look at this, just look at it. It really does feel like it's been pulled out of a piece of science fiction, right? There are so many things I loved about the Vision Pro. So let's talk specs. The Vision Pro has 12 cameras, five different sensors, six microphones. So it has a whole array of equipment listening to you, watching you, checking your eye movements, your hand movements. I find that it all works very well. It captured everything very quickly. Inside, obviously, it has the M5 silicon. And then the inner displays. It has dual OLED displays with 23 million pixels. The resolution is very impressive. The sound is surprisingly good. When you first turn it on, it really is that kind of magic moment, right? When the very familiar Apple home screen appears just projected into space or projected on your wall, I mean, it really does feel like you can reach out and grab them. There's also this weird thing, once you've been in the Vision Pro long enough and you take it off, reality somehow feels a little bit less real. Like I kept wanting to like zoom in in real life. I don't know, it, it's a very peculiar sensation. Now that it has the M5 chip, Apple says it can get up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now you can't set the refresh rate setting. The M5 chip essentially decides for you when to crank things up to 120. When I was watching 3D movies, for instance, it didn't feel like 120 hertz resolution. It felt a bit stuttery, which maybe is just the, the limits of the device. Other times it definitely felt incredibly smooth. I had no problem believing it was operating at, at full capacity, but it would be nice if you could set it to 120 hertz or 60 hertz or whatever you like. Instead, it's kind of a mystery what it's operating at at any given time. It's more comfortable than I thought it would be. I was able to wear it for two, sometimes three hours at a time without having any real issues. I haven't had any issues with motion sickness or anything like that. I found it's really easy to adjust. There's two knobs on the knit band that you can adjust like so. I do have a really big head. I don't know if you can tell on YouTube, but I do have an unusually large head. Uh, I, I had to adjust the size all the way to the limits in one respect. But overall, it's, it's surprisingly comfortable. Now there's one thing I don't love about the fit and design, but it's something that's inherent to all virtual reality, augmented reality products. And that's that you're kind of looking into the world through a pair of goggles. I mean, the display is really, really wide. It's really impressive, but your periphery is blocked off. So it does kind of feel like you're wearing those scuba diver goggles and you're just sort of peering in the world through that. Eventually you kind of stop noticing it, but it's not the best. Right now, as I'm talking, I can see everything around me. I can see the camera in front of me. I can see my buddy Mark over here. It really is the world in real time and very clear resolution. So that's why this is considered augmented reality and not just virtual reality. It lets you interact with the world around you. Now, you can also go to other worlds, which is pretty cool. Apple's designed these immersive environments. So there's Bora Bora, Yosemite, but also the surface of the moon, and Jupiter. So you can enter one of these immersive environments and instead of what you see around you, it'll actually look like you're standing on the surface of the moon. And if that sounds cool, it's even cooler to do it. <laughs> there was one 3D immersive video where you're swimming with sharks. It was shot for the Vision Pro. And it's just a short little nature documentary. You're at the bottom of the ocean in the Bahamas and there's these massive tiger sharks swimming all around you, coming right up to your face. And honestly, I've never watched a piece of media quite like it. It was one of the most special unique and memorable video experiences I've had in my entire life. If you twist the digital crown on top of the device, you can actually adjust how much of the immersive environment you see. So if you spin the digital crown, maybe just in front of you, you see the surface of the moon. If you dial it all the way, you can actually get a 360 degree panorama. There's something really special about it. So right now it looks like I'm sitting on a moon of Jupiter. Jupiter is right up here. There's snow and rocks all around me and I can actually do a full spin and see everything. I can see the Milky Way overhead. I mean, that kind of experience is really special. And you still have the full suite of Vision Pro apps, right? So I could pull up a YouTube video. I could pull up my text messages. I could pull up, you know, any app or experience I wanted, which is pretty freaking sweet. If you go into the HBO Max app, you can watch movies in the Great Hall of Hogwarts. And it's 
astounding. I mean, there's fire in the fireplace. There's actually like wind whistling through the halls. There's the floating candles and the stars up at the ceiling. You can look down and see the stone blocks that make up the floor. I mean, it really does feel like you're standing there in the Great Hall at Hogwarts watching whatever movie you want, you know, including Harry Potter. It's that kind of thoughtful design that makes the Vision Pro so easy to use. In the first demos and videos with the Vision Pro Apple release, I was really skeptical that it could operate as seamlessly as they, they showed it working, but it really does. It's very, very smooth. It, it's those kind of moments that you can't really get with any other product. The M5 chip makes it easier to turn your photos into spatial photos. So to basically make any photo you want 3D, and that really does add a pop of life to your photographs. It, happens almost instantly, you know, when you're considering how much AI is involved in this, the transformation into a spatial photo happens very, very quickly. Looking at your photos that way, it really does take you back into the moment when you were there. It's not always flawless. Sometimes the 3D is a little bit off, but for the most part, it works, it works very cleanly. One of the most popular uses of VR technology is Porn. People do really like it, it's popular. Now, can you watch pornography on the Vision Pro? Yes, you can. You have to fiddle with some of the settings. There's some things you need to do in the back end, but you can do it. Is it a cool experience in VR? It's a very unique experience. I do think that's one of the, the reasons people invest in VR. You know, we don't talk about it a lot, but I think that's definitely true. Of course, Apple doesn't make it a seamless process to do that because Apple's kind of weird when it comes to sex. Apple's this really cool company that has always had this reputation as being a total prude. I mean, Apple really does live in a sexless world. It doesn't want anything risque or too adult on the App Store. I'm sure there are tons of app developers, adult websites that would love to be designing experiences or apps for the Vision Pro, but that's never gonna fly. I would have to say all the coolest experiences I had with the Vision Pro were entertainment experiences. That's where it really shines, but that's not necessarily how Apple is pushing it. I mean, when you look at their marketing materials, they're often pitching it as sort of like a work productivity device, which is not how I would recommend using this. I mean, I did call into a team meeting wearing the Vision Pro, and it actually rendered my 3D persona, a virtual version of myself. So I was in the metaverse attending this team meeting, and you know, everyone kind of got a kick out of it. It was cool but I really didn't enjoy working on the Vision Pro. It just wasn't a good experience for me. Even though you can have a giant wraparound screen, you know, that's as big as you want it. I don't know, it just was kind of an awkward experience for me. One of my coworkers loves to say, you know, no one wants to wear a computer strapped on their head. And that's kind of, that never felt more true than when I was trying to get work done on the Vision Pro. Now, Apple will tell you you can game with the Vision Pro. It's not really designed for gaming the way the MetaQuest is. I did try this. I played a pickleball game on the Vision Pro and you know, it was kind of fun and diverting for a minute. You know, I, I had some controllers that were compatible with it. I was knocking a virtual pickleball back and forth with some, some imaginary computer guy. And yeah, it was, it was fine. It did not feel like an Apple experience. You know, it, it had the sense of like a more boring Wii game is kind of what it felt like, like a Wii game with none of the personality. That's how I would describe it. So for an Apple product where we have very high standards, the gaming, eh, it just wasn't for me. So a lot of what I'm saying will be familiar to people who have already tested or tried this product, and that's because not much is different here. Apple did put the M5 chip into it. It did make some changes to the design, the fit, the, the knit band that goes around your head has been redesigned. It's more comfortable, it's more secure. The M5 silicon inside, Apple says it gives you 50% faster performance in key areas. But other than that, I mean, this is pretty much the same Vision Pro people have been using for, for over a year now, right? So in that sense, it's kind of a disappointing update in that it's not really an update, right? You get the new chip, but the underlying product is still pretty much the same. So why can't I recommend a product that I loved testing? It really just comes down to the price tag. This is priced at $34.99. That's a big, big ask, especially now that Samsung has the Galaxy XR headset, which does a lot of the same things for almost half the price. Samsung Galaxy XR is priced at $1,799, which is still incredibly expensive, but much more affordable. And that makes it really hard to justify going into the Apple system here.
And here's the thing, I think every rich person in the world should buy this. I, I honestly want this product to keep existing and maybe in the future get more affordable, but if no one buys it, Apple's not gonna make content for it, right? People aren't gonna make apps for it. So part of me really wants to tell every person in the world, if you own a yacht, you should own five Vision Pros. Just, just fill your house with them, right? I, I, I do think it's that cool of a product, but can I recommend it to friends and family? No, I can't, not at this price tag. That's also one of the problems Apple has had is that there aren't a ton of apps. If you go into Apple TV, there's special content for the Vision Pro, but it's honestly pretty limited. They have seasons of you know nature documentaries, adventure documentaries, and some of those seasons are two episodes long. The videos are six minutes. You run out of content very quickly and there's really no just killer app, you know, something that is just like, I have to have the Vision Pro for this to work. There are some cool apps. There's some astronomy apps that I loved. There's a fun little dinosaur app, but there's really nothing that I felt like I had to have it in my life. And that's a big problem for Apple. Another big problem I have with the Vision Pro is because there isn't that critical mass of people using it, using it does feel very isolating. Now you can use the pass through so you can see what's going on around you, talk to people around you. But all the time I was testing the Vision Pro, I really felt like I was by myself. You know, my, my partner hated when I was testing this because it meant I would be shut up in the room watching movies, testing different settings, testing different apps, and she couldn't really participate, which isn't as fun, right? The best tech products can kind of help us come together, help enable social experiences, bring us together. The Vision Pro felt very isolating to me. Now, the iPad and MacBook are easy to recommend. They're great products. They're a little iterative, but they're great products. The Vision Pro though, at $34.99 is a really tough sell. Now, it really has the same fundamental problem as the original, which is what do you really need this for? Yeah, it provides really cool entertainment experiences, but besides that, is there anything you have to have this device for in the way that you need a laptop or a smartphone? And the answer is no. This has been the M5 Vision Pro. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below.